Hi everybody, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor, lawyer, turned homeschooling mom of three kids ages 8, 5, and 3. This video is just a quick review of the Mathematical Reasoning Level C book by the Critical Thinking Company. It's one of the math books that we've been using for grade 2. And actually Level C is labeled as being appropriate for grade 2 for my son who just turned 8 this fall. Um, I really enjoy this book. Another upcoming video will be the review of the Critical Thinking Company's Language Smarts Level C book for Grade 2. And um, I don't like that book as much, and if you want to know why, you can stay tuned for that video. I really like Critical Thinking Company. The first books that I started using from Critical Thinking Company were their Mind Bender series, and there's 14 levels of those all the way from pre-K through 12. We used them last year and this year, and my son really likes doing the puzzles. I had actually done similar puzzles to the ones in Mindbenders when I was in Gifted as a child, and I remembered those. So when I saw the book, I just knew I had to get it, and fortunately, my son enjoys them as well. So the mathematical reasoning books are labeled as being either core curriculum or a supplemental resource. I believe that they're much more effective as a supplemental resource, precisely because they don't have very much spiraling or review or um, just kind of rote repetition. We combine mathematical reasoning with Singapore math. Those are our two primary sources for math education in our house. I do throw in the uh, Math UC DVD every now and then because I got it at a sale one day, but we don't do the workbook for that because we find it incredibly boring. Next year, I might incorporate um, Beast Academy as well, but right now this is really good for us. And I think I will continue having mathematical reasoning uh, as a supplement for next year as well. Um, the book binding was not that good in this one because you can see it's just glued on, but the pages are staying together really well with the glue, but for some reason this binding separated from the cardboard. And I think I can just um, glue that back on, but just so you're aware that does happen. So the book begins with this table of contents, and I'll just zoom in to show you that it is actually a really useful table of contents if you intend on using this book as a supplement and not marching straight through, because it talks to you about what standards are on this side in alphabetical order. So it has everything from action to um, capacity, circle graphs, coins, and all the way down to things like expanded notation. And there's quite a few pages of, um, of contents here. And it tells you exactly what pages each of these things are on. And not only does it break it down into different standards, so for example, addition, it'll break it down into different activities for that standard. So addition here is practiced with numbers and operations on all of these pages, in an algebraic way on these pages, in a geometrical way here, incorporating measurement here, data analysis and probability here. So if you wanted to talk about coins again, here you have just numbers and operations with coins, but then here you have algebra with coins and then so on and so forth. Here you have measurement with coins and so they do I think like estimation and stuff like that there. And it's a nice way of breaking down exactly what each page is if you're interested in truly um, customizing when you do what page, they make it really easy for you. We don't do that, we pretty much sort of march through and it's just fun. It starts off pretty simply with numbers and operations, just kind of getting them back under speed, but you'll see each page is quite different. No two pages repeat in this book. This is probably the most commonly repeated activity, and it's probably every 20 pages or so, where they'll have one page of numerical operations and then have like a, a dot to dot. I find this a little bit irritating, and this is the only thing I find irritating about this book, because this dot to dot makes it often sometimes easy for them to fill in the answers. So when we do this, I generally put in a piece of construction paper here, just so he's not tempted to follow along and fill in the answers, and it works out pretty well. As you can see, it does things for equal signs. I like how colorful the book is, but the pages are not glossy, so they're really easy to write on with pencil, which is nice. Um, and it just keeps marching on straight through. So here, you'll see at the top of the page, it rotates and tells you exactly what the page is addressing. So here it says geometry, and on this page it says numbers and operations. Here's another numbers and operations page. Here's an algebraic page. These types of pages I find really enlightening for a child and really good practice for algebra to come because it's teaching them the concept in a very simple way that you can have a symbol stand in the place of a number, which is fundamentally what algebra is about. I had friends who started doing algebra in eighth grade and could not grasp that concept that X could equal a number. 
And here they're teaching you it very simply by saying that here you're going to have 12 equal a heart. See, you can have 8 plus 4 equals a heart, or you can have 7 plus 5 equals a heart. And then later, if you have 11 plus blank equals a heart, what will it be? What does the heart equal? It's teaching them algebra without teaching them algebra, if that makes sense. Um, it introduces fractions in a really graphic way. Pages that I don't think we should do or that I think that are a waste of our time, I just cross out and he just moves on. Um, I like how they have uh, activities like this that introduce concepts like tessellation and actually have an activity as well. So here you had to find the patterns, you know, in the tessellate. There's other ones where you have to put your finger down on a page and you do a probability exercise with that. So really fun. I like how it teaches them um, uh, addition, like in a very simplistic way, and it shows you ones to column, tens column, and keeps them in different colors. So there's many different um, ways of approaching a learner in this book. Not only do they talk to you in um, actual words for those that like clear labeling, they also talk to you in colors for those that are more visual in terms of learning. They incorporate fun activities in the midst of uh, less fun activities. When they show coins, they show you the actual picture of a coin, which is another feature that I appreciate. And it goes on, and I'll just flip through for you just to show you some of the pages. The estimation pages are very valuable. My son has difficulty with estimation sometimes because a lot of times when they'll see it, it's actually very precise. Here you'll notice they only provide the lines in one of them, and then the lines disappear, which makes it a much more realistic estimation activity. They have a lot of geometry in here as well, very simple concepts introduced in, I think, exactly an appropriate fashion for this age group. There's surveys in this book as well, and we generally save the surveys for when we do a school in a coffee shop or when we're going to the park, and if I happen to have this book in the car with us, then we'll take it out and he'll run around and interact with people and survey them, which is really fun. And we just go through. It'll incorporate uh, little blocks and cubes. So if you are doing this in conjunction with Math UC or a curriculum that incorporates um, 10 blocks, this will be a good supplement to that as well because they'll be familiar with that idea. As you can see here for Math UC folks, it's very similar. Um, they do a lot of work with number charts as well just to teach them. If you'll notice here, it's not a hundreds chart. It's a 10 to 1000s chart. So it teaches them relationships of numbers that you might not often see in a second grade curriculum. Um, they deal with issues of symmetry and reflections. And this was a particularly challenging page that we recently did, and it's a word problem, but based on what they say here, you have to figure out the answers, and it's a little bit tricky. Um, we definitely talked this one through, but it was fun, and we had the opportunity to talk about how we would work through a more complicated word problem. I like that the book does not dumb it down. Although they will repeat things many times, you will find a variety of activities and it's a really good way of pinpointing mathematical concepts that your kids might not be so comfortable with that you took for granted. For example, estimation or um, word problems. Here is um, geometry again and they take them through the steps of actual proofs. So when later in high school they take geometry, they will have to do proofs by saying like, why is this thing that you already know to be true, true? Like, what is your logical reasoning? And they do that with them where they ask them to describe things that are the same between different polygons and things that are different. And I think that's a really good exercise. Sometimes, if you'll notice here, it says oral. Sometimes if my son is feeling like he doesn't want to write all of that down, I simply ask him to explain it to me and that's perfectly fine. He gets to write the word oral and we move on. Um, that's a really good way of keeping your child's interest and not making them resist you with an activity that really, what are we learning here? I want him to be able to do the proof. This is not a writing exercise. So if he is feeling like he does not want to write at that time, I'm going to let that slide. Um, that's a good tip for all of you who have children perhaps who want to move through things and don't feel like doing one particular aspect of an activity. Ask yourself whether that's actually the point of the activity. Is that what you want your child to learn from that activity? If it's not, try to accommodate them. It truly doesn't um, cost you anything and it probably brings you closer and it shows them that you are listening to them. Anyway, 
So um, here's a good estimation activity. And you know, there some of the pages take much longer than others, which is another thing that makes it a good book to um, use as a supplement. Because if you just want to do a quick activity, you can definitely skip ahead a little bit or skip around and find something that's only going to take a few minutes. For example, this activity took about one or two minutes. Whereas um, something like this again would only take a little while, but something like this takes a little bit longer because it involves more thinking. A page like this reveals a lot about how your child is processing math. How are they thinking about what math actually means? What are you doing when you're doing that math problem? I really like this book. I cannot recommend it highly enough. This, this is a picture was really, really challenging for him. So we had to talk about how there are things that will be unknown. That concept of being unknown was something he had not worked with before. That things might be true, false, or you might have no way of knowing. These are the types of things that I found that this book provided that we really haven't seen in other books. For the most part, I find most of the activities in this book really, really worthwhile. You'll see here around three-fourths of the way through the book, it starts to get into multiplication and multiplication tables. I like that they work with bigger numbers so that we're not always working in the hundreds. They do do time activities scattered throughout but not too much. I like here that they relate multiplication to what it actually is so it'll show you like draw a rectangle that matches the area. It's already teaching your child that area is related to a multiplication problem so that this concept doesn't come up later in a completely unrelated way. I really can't say enough good things about this book. Here it has interactive things so we're making snowflakes here and it'll teach you about symmetrical shapes and what's actually happening there. So there are interactive activities, there's measurement there, and it goes on throughout. Here it has some three digit addition, and at the very end of the book, it has um, a glossary. So if you wanna show pictures of what a diagonal line is, what diameter is, what digits are versus numerals, isosceles triangles versus an isosceles trapezoid, um, I was actually going to take these pages out for the glossary and um, keep them in his binder for next year so that he always has something to refer to. At the very back of the book, you also have an answer key. So if grading or having multiple children and just not enough time to do all this is an issue for you, you do have an answer key in the back, which is something my son has yet to discover, so I don't worry about it at all. Yes. I love this book. I cannot recommend it highly enough. If you're looking for a good supplement um, to round out your child's like arithmetic education, this is a really good option. It really incorporates a lot of algebra and geometry and money skills into your child's learning. So this is a really, really good book and worth the money in my opinion. I believe they run in the 20s in terms of um, cost, but I am not positive about that. I will link it down below and you can definitely look at that on your own. Um, thanks so much for watching you guys. I hope this review was helpful and if there's any particular books you'd like to see me review or if any of you have other books from the Critical Thinking Company that you really recommend, I would love to hear about it below. Thanks so much again and happy math you guys. Bye!